Hey, hello everyone, welcome back. Um, so now I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail about, about heat and the ideas of heat and thermal equilibrium. So I've already mentioned both these things in the previous recordings, but we will um, look a little bit uh, more in depth into these rather important concepts. <clears throat> okay, so again, what is, what is the meaning of heat? So this is important to stress because often um, just conceptually, we uh, use heat in the wrong way. We'll say like the heat of this uh, object increased. And just in order to be consistent with terminology, it's really important to uh, think about heat only as a transfer of energy. So a system itself, an, uh, a physical, material like you know your ice or your uh, water cannot contain heat it could be hot could be warm but we don't say it contains heat heat uh the word heat in physics we use that specifically to indicate the transfer of energy uh, and how is that energy transferred um, that energy is always transferred due to a temperature difference between two objects. So when you bring uh, a cold object at a lower temperature in thermal contact with a hot object or warmer object at a higher temperature, um, this temperature difference between these objects is what is going to allow for the transfer of heat. So heat is really uh, indicates the actual transfer of energy from one object to another. And what is that direction of the heat flow? It always goes from uh, high temperature objects to low temperature objects. So at this point, just kind of use your everyday knowledge uh, to convince yourself of this. But later towards the end of this course, we will look at the idea of entropy and that's what will help us um, really help us explain why heat always moves from high to low temperatures. But um, kind of intuitively we know or from, from our everyday experience, whenever we mix or put in thermal contact an object which is at a low temperature, um, compared uh, with one at a higher temperature, the final temperature as this two objects come to a thermal equilibrium was going to be a temperature which is somewhere in between. So in other words, the warmer object will cool down, the colder object will warm up, and they'll meet somewhere in between. In the next recording, I will talk in, in more detail about exactly what determines that final temperature? Is the final temperature going to be very close to the hot object or closer to the cold object or exactly in between? So we will see exactly what, what determines. For now, for, for determines that. For now, all you need to know is that heat will flow from the warmer object to a colder object. It's not possible for, for the colder object to cool off and the hot, um, warm object to warm up. Although those two can still conserve energy because one thing is going down, another one is going up, but it goes against um, the idea of entropy, which we'll uh, return to at the very end of this class. Okay, so heat will flow this way. Energy leaves the hot object um, in the form of heat and then enters the cold object. So heat is just really the, the motion of that energy. Now, when the two objects finally reach the same temperature, so you know this one is slowly cooling down, this one is uh, slowly warming up, but eventually they will come to the same enter, uh, temperature, and that is what is known as thermal equilibrium. Once they're they're at the same temperature, there's no longer heat flowing because heat must flow, or it can flow only when there's a temperature difference. So once the two objects reach thermal equilibrium, there's no more interaction, no more flow of heat. So often if we're looking at these systems and we're thinking about the physical interval, you know, we have some starting temperatures and conditions, 
But if the system reaches thermal in equilibrium, that's the natural end of our interval. There's no more energy exchange that happens beyond that point. OK, so we're going to kind of think about these concepts in, in form of various questions that I will go ahead and ask you now. All right, so let's take a look at our first example here. So in this uh, example, we have an ice cube that we take out of our freezer, which is at uh, zero degrees Celsius, and we throw it in a bath of water, which is also at zero degrees Celsius. We also, uh, I'm also telling you that the water and the ice can exchange heat with each other, but not with the environment. So we assume this is some kind of closed container. Um, there's no heat that can flow in or out from the outside. Now, based on this information, what is the direction of the heat transfer? Is it from the ice cube to the water, from the water to the ice cube, that there's no heat flow, or there's just not enough information, or we can't tell? All right, think about it. Go back to the description of heat that I gave in the previous slide. Uh, pause the video and see if you got the right answer. So the answer is there's no heat flow. So remember from the definition, you can have heat flow or this transfer of energy from one object on, uh, uh, to another under what condition? When there are two objects that are in thermal contact that are at a different temperature. In this case, both the water and the ice are initially at zero degrees Celsius. So if they're at zero degrees Celsius, there's no interaction, they're gonna stay in their state, there's gonna be no exchange of energy and basically nothing will happen. So although we have different phases, we know that a substance of two different phases can still exist at the same temperature. So if you go back to the three-phase diagram, this ice is at that corner. So there are these two corners along that straight line. The ice is at one corner where it's kind of about to start melting and the water is at the other corner. It's at melting temperature, but it's still all water. So all, but all that matters for heat transfer is that there has to be a difference in temperature. And in this case, they're at the same temperature, so no heat will flow. <clears throat> all right. Let's look at our next example. In this example, imagine that you have a nice cube, which is again initially at zero degrees Celsius, and you dip it into a cup of liquid nitrogen. So liquid nitrogen is different from H2O and it actually has its boiling temperature at a very, very low temperature. So, you know, water boils at plus 100 degrees Celsius, <clears throat> nitrogen boils at minus 196 degrees Celsius. So it's actually liquid turning into a gas, but at a very low temperature. Okay, and then you leave that ice in there until the temperature of the ice cube stops changing. So it's no longer changing and it's sitting in boiling nitrogen. <clears throat> so the question is, what is the final, what can we conclude about the final temperature of the ice cube after this interaction? So is it still at zero? Is it at minus 196? Is it somewhere in between the two temperatures or none of these situations? All right, again, pause the video, think about it. And I'll explain the answer. Okay, so the answer is at 100 and minus 196 degrees Celsius. So let's think about why. So, well, we know, first of all, heat will be exchanged. In this case, we have two objects at two different temperatures and heat will flow away from um, the warmer object, which is the ice cube towards the colder one, which is the liquid nitrogen. So we know that the final temperature has to be, well, the first thing we know is that it has to be somewhere in, in between. So between zero and, 100 and um, minus 196. So we know that, but how can we conclude that it's actually that the ice went all the way to, uh, to the boiling temperature of liquid nitrogen? Well, there's something kind of a subtle piece of information given to you here. You're told that the ice cube, when the ice cube stops changing its temperature, so you know thermal equilibrium has reached, it's sitting in boiling nitrogen. 
So if we have nitrogen, which is boiling, what does that tell you? The word boiling means it's still going through that phase transition. So it still has to be at its boiling temperature, which is 100 minus 196. But you might think, well, that kind of doesn't make sense. Doesn't, doesn't because the ice decreases in temperature, it's losing energy. Doesn't that mean that the liquid nitrogen must be gaining energy? Well, that's true. But remember, there's various ways that you can gain energy. The temperature changing, increasing in temperature is not the only way. Another way that you can gain energy is by going through a phase transition. So this warmer ice, what is it? Um, what it what is it doing to the nitrogen? Well, it's moving it farther along in its phase transition from liquid to gas. So yes, its energy is increasing, but it's only increasing in the form of bond energy, the phase transition. And when there's bond energy change, there's no temperature change. So it's still possible for this li liquid nitrogen to not change any temperature. Uh, but just go through the phase transition. Of course, you know, if you put maybe a lot of ice in there um, and you don't have that much liquid nitrogen, eventually all the liquid nitrogen will turn into gas and then maybe even start warming up and they would meet somewhere in between. But in this particular interaction, because you were told there's still boiling nitrogen left at the end, that's kind of a clue that tells us, okay, it's still boiling, so it has to be at its boiling point. All right, one more question, kind of similar to the previous one. So you take a very cold ice cube out of the freezer. Okay, it's a strong freezer. So minus 50 degrees Celsius and you put it into a mixture of ice and water and leave it until the temperature of the ice cube stops changing. So again, thermal equilibrium has been reached. What is the final temperature of the ice cube after the interaction we just described, knowing that there's still some ice and water left. So, you know, um, we have zero here, Celsius minus 50, some temperature in between, and again, not enough information. So if you're not sure, go back to the previous question, think about that and see how that can help you with this question. See if you understand this a little bit more now. Okay, pause the video. All right, so the answer is zero degrees Celsius. So again, very similar to the previous question. What we have here is ice, which is at minus 50 degrees Celsius. And then we have a mixture of ice and water. So just this word of we have a mixture of ice and water tells us that this has to be at zero degrees Celsius because the only time that uh, a substance can be in a mixed phase is if it's at its transition temperature. So when do we have ice and water together? At zero degrees Celsius. So that kind of tells us, okay, we have minus 50 and then um, something which is at minus 50 degrees interacting with something which is at zero degrees. So again, uh, the very first conclusion that is that the equilibrium temperature has to be in between because heat has to leave the warmer one and go to the colder one. So it has to meet somewhere in between. But you're also told that once the interaction is done, there is still some ice and water left. So what does that tell us? That there is still a mixed phase left at the end and what's the only temperature at which you can have a mixed solid and liquid phase at the melting temperature, which is exactly zero degrees Celsius. So let's think of like in terms of energy, how is that possible? So again, we have an ice that started somewhere like really cold and that's increasing in temperature. So it's thermal energy is going up. We have ice water, which is some, let's say somewhere right here. Um, and then what's happening to its energy? Well, if the ice is an increasing in thermal energy and we're assuming it's a closed system, it actually doesn't say that explicitly here, but let's assume it's a closed system. So if 
the ice is increasing in energy, the ice uh, water mixture has to be decreasing in energy. So in, the, in what direction is it going in that direction? So basically what, say, what that's saying is that more of the water is turning into ice. So it's a phase transition that bond energy is going down, but it's only the bond energy. There's no thermal energy change because at the end, when this interaction is done, there's still some ice left. So it, it went in that direction, but there was not enough energy for it to also start cooling down. So again, in the next segment, what we're gonna look at is more quantitatively, we're actually gonna start calculating things and, and trying to figure out, well, you know, how much, let's say, ice do you need to have and how much um, this mixed phase and, and which stage of your mixed phase do you have to be in order for that, let's say, equilibrium state to be zero? Or, you know, let's say if I was told that the final, if I told you that the final temperature was minus 20 degrees Celsius, then using that information, you could say, oh, if, you're, if you know that you had initially a one kilogram of half ice, half water, you can actually calculate how much ice did you have when you made that mixture in order to have that final temperature of minus 20 degrees Celsius. So we're just gonna get a little bit more quantitative about this analysis. All right, thank you for listening and I'll see you next time.